<laughs> hey guys, welcome back. All right, today I've just re-uploaded my how to wire video. It's it's a simple set of instructions that most people should be able to get their heads around. Now, let's get to it. Wiring. Okay, so this is actually at the stage where it runs currently. Um, let me give a few tricks on how to wire these up. Super simple. So if you get your whole Bellino loom, I mean whole Bellino loom, get to that in a moment. Now lay it out, you want to find your engine loom, um, the injector is an easy one to find where you're at because they're evenly spaced. Plug those in and work your way back. The plugs only go on one plug, you can't get them wrong, don't force them or you will get them wrong. I'll just put that back on while I'm here. Um, what, nah, I'll get back to that. So what I do is lay out your loom from end, I think this is your furthest end which is your coil pack. Um, strip, I try to strip as much of this crap off as I can because by now Probably knows what, 25 years old, it's all shagged. Um, then lay out where you want the loom to run. It's not really actually all that important where it runs, as long as it does run. Don't forget your cam, uh, crank angle sensor, which that's the wire for it there. Not that you can actually see that, but that feeds off. That feeds off in a different spot. There's a few things you'll find in the loom that you want in different spots. Um, find your cam angle sensor. You can run that right up to here if you want and down. Um, I like to run it down there, it's nice and neat out of the way, nowhere near the fan belt. Um, yeah, so what you do is you lay out your wire until this point. Now, at this point here, now in your main cluster loom, which is where we are here, it's a little bit hard to see, I apologise, but you'll find, so this is the loom that feeds to your shirt. Alright, sort of life. Um, this is the loom, now, ignore this, but this is the loom that feeds into the car, so you find your black with white trace, that's your ignition feed. You feed, this is your standard Sierra coil um, positive, wire that into there. So what that does is means when you flip your key to ignition, you instantly have power running from that into your loom. Now that literally will switch the whole loom on. Um, it'll switch the computer on, all that kind of stuff. The other thing you need to do, run a big power wire, so you can see where I've got it fed in there. Over, so this is off at the moment, the positive side of your battery. Um, you can actually use these. These are in the Bellino loom to start with, but I strip them out, um, obviously, because you don't want that's quite a bit of wire hanging around. But if you use the two of them and join them, you can actually make a whole thing, and I'll get to that once that's done. Um, the other wire you need to run is near, where are we in the plug? One moment, okay, just here. So you can see that's the loom out of the fuse box. Down around, pink wire. Pink wire is fuel pump. So this long red wire, this is all just temp so the car runs. I apologize how it looks. Um, I'll get to it once that's done obviously. But that's your power feed for your fuel pump. Earths, plug it in and it will go. Uh, as simple as that. I don't run a check engine light. I don't run all the other stuff. These things are really, really, really reliable. And when they play out, you can literally by their symptoms usually tell what's wrong with them. And if we need a check engine light, it's 10 minutes wire work to wire it in. So a temp one, and it's actually quite a bit of work to make them work on the dash. The way this works as well, you can unplug the loom, unplug, pull the fuel pump feed wire out, take the whole loom out of the car. So if you roll it or trash it, so you get trashed all the time, want to put this motor in your next car, bang, done. It's five minutes to wire it back in. It makes it super, super, super simple. Um, yeah, I'm sure people are going to tell me they need a check engine light or whatever, but I've never used one in any of these. Oh, this is probably the 10th, I think, or 8th or something stupid of these conversions. Never once needed a check engine light, and I've even post that I don't believe the guys have got them have needed a check engine light. Um, also, I don't have a speed sensor. Did one on a mate's car. It made zero difference. Not fuel economy, not power, nothing. So it's quite a bit of work, and we don't bother. All right. So now it's running. What you want to do is reduce your loom. Now, this is pretty daunting for people who haven't done it before. And you get your plugs, anything that looks like this, like this, that's quite a large power one. Um, the, anything's plugged in, obviously you can't, but anything that's not plugged into something, now that's a light loom, so you can literally follow this the whole way back to where it rejoins the loom, up here, and double check, you can cut that off. Um, there's only a couple of wires that travel down and back up here, uh, there, one of these. Sorry, it's a little bit hard off the top of my head, but that'll become obvious in a sec. Um, so what I'm gonna do is cut all these excess unused plugs off, strip the wiring down, and make a huge mess. Okay, so in, plug, not plugged to anything, there's a lot of it here, all get the chop. 
the only thing you've got to be careful of is lines that are double backed um, and connect up further up in the loom which is where you're going to find just up in here and stuff like that so what I'm going to do is actually not worry about that section altogether right now and strip this one back because that way you get an idea of what you can keep and what you've got to get rid of so any wires that run from here down into the so this is the tree up to the ECU sorry any wires that run from here down into this section of the loom well the one that doesn't go back into the loom into the fuse box you have to trace and see what they go to a lot of them just go to empty plugs and then you can actually remove them the whole way up to the ECU um, this is optional um, I have actually seen a couple of Suzuki's now with just like an absolute crap load of um, wiring literally in a plastic bag in the glove box or in the engine bay and this takes takes a bit of time like if you've never done it before allow half a day um, if you have done it before allow half a day because it's just kind of how it works so as you can see they don't go to anything instantly ready to remove from the loom now this one here also goes to nothing so what see how this one Sorry, I'm pull all this down. But this one here feeds up into here. Now this, I think, is called a power distribution block. I'm unsure, to be 100% honest. What I'll do, find that one there, which I found, and clip him off. And that whole section is done. So now, now, the rest, what's on the floor here, nothing is plugged into anything. All these wires will all be open circuits. So everything that comes past about this point, actually, probably, oh, sorry, this point up here is basically an open circuit. If you really want, you can grab them here and cut it and then thin it out from there. Have done that before. Um, wouldn't really recommend it. I try and pull the larger wires or things like this out because they can be used for other purposes. But we'll keep stripping it down a bit further here, see where everything goes, and we can actually start, I tend to start moving them from the plug up. Um, Okay, so now, as you can see, I've reduced the white complete loom, all that you could see around here, down to this. Now, the only downside with doing it like this, you always end up with this, which is, you can double it up and have about half a metre of excess wire. Um, I like to put an earth trap at the end of it, so it looks like it's not just a pointless piece of loom. It is a pointless piece of loom. There's two options here. You can cut all these wires and shorten them, solder them, and have a much shorter loom, and that's nicer. Um, straight up, that's nicer. It is an epic amount of work. It's about the same amount of work as wiring the whole car again. It also adds solder joints. Now, solder joints in a four-wheel drive wiring loom are not ideal. If you ever get solder joints, you can wiggle them, and uh, you'll get breakage right next to the solder. Why breaks? GG, end of the loom, and nightmare. Especially something you're not going to be out, or something where you're going to be full driving in. Um, you don't want something to be uh, the, uh, that reliability is becoming an issue. So personally, I know other people will feel differently. I don't care. Um, personally, I'd prefer to have a tail of a loom that isn't nice. You can zip tie it in behind here. There's nothing in there. You can't see it. It doesn't hurt anything. All right, wiring done. Uh, I've apologised for the sound. I am outside now. We just took it for its first drive. All went well. I forgot how hard stock cars with G16Bs in them actually go. Had a fair bit going on. Anyway, so I'll show you the wiring. So nice and clean, down under the inlet. Up, oh, that's obviously, this is your feed for your fuse box. Across, there's a little bit of wiring going on there, but as I say, like, you can't tell it's there. And it, it only stands out currently because the rest of the engine bay is filthy, and I'm filthy, and everything's filthy, and that's clean. Um, yeah, look at that. Pretty stoked with it. Um, there's a few things let us want to done on it that I couldn't do. We were going to put a aftermarket oil pressure and water temp gauge. The thread in the block was different for the oil pressure and the water temp. The sender leaks. Yay! eBay life. Um, other than that, yeah, it actually feels good. It's punchy, no misfires or anything like that. So hopefully I can uh, take it back to the lettuce man himself tonight. Just touching the throttle and forth.